why generalizations first of all this module will tell us why in global job markets general statements are given about men and women and plurals are not used the generalizations are constructed through discourse through our talk talk about men and women whose discourse those who have powerful place and you know place is also called habitus and this place means your place your location in society your status in society so if you are in powerful position your discourse will also be powerful so these people who are powerful they make such discourses in which generalizations are made they ignore variant experiences they think that all men are like this all women are like this they ignore their individual differences tribal sardars for example if uh, we take example from pakistan uh, culture pakistan's context so here tribal sardars they do so in tribes because they are in powerful position so they make decisions they uh, make uh, perceptions about women in general they they th they think that they don't have any a power of decision making so it is we sardars who can do that similarly teachers do so in class teachers think that students are dependent on them they don't know anything about a particular topic we give them knowledge we provide them information researchers also do the same thing they construct generalizations on the basis of their sample data they work with a small group of people are a small context and uh, after that when they collect data they analyze their data and on the basis of that limited observation and data they make generalizations about the whole population about the whole social group for example shows that a study a research shows that a study white girls face crisis of confidence in adolescence there was a study and they worked with white adolescents and on the basis of this sample they said that all white female they face crisis of confidence when they reach the age of adolescence beyond puberty this perception comes from the sample of research it is observed that black girls do not face such crisis in this age not because black girls were not part of this sample so, so this individual difference was ignored by the researcher and on the basis of white girl sample the researcher concluded that all girls regardless they are white or black they face confidence crisis when they are in adolescent now white teachers are in power so the point is why such generalizations are accepted because white teachers are in power and they talk about adolescent white girls as being more respectful less confident not as outspoken as they were in their childhood so because of this discourse of people people of power the teachers the generalization is made that all white girls lack crisis confidence as us teachers consider black girls inferior their lack of confidence crisis in the same age is taken as rude and indecent here race involves with gender 
Now, to understand the relationship of power, discourse, and generalizations about gender, about a particular sex, we should do a task. Think your own experience as adolescents. Do you think confidence crisis is part of human development? Or it is gendered? It relates with being a male or being a female. To wind up, we can say that the study of gender should include experiences of males and females with respect to class, race, power, and age. And in this way, we don't talk about generalizations because when we involve all these factors, all these variables in the study of gender, there would be differences. And instead of using the terms masculine and feminine, we'll be preferred to use the terms masculinities and femininities to cover all these differences.